You won't believe this, America. The Biden administration is admitting that Donald Trump is right. We need the wall, and it has to be built, and we want to build it fast. We're going to build the wall. It's going to be built, and we have to build the wall. And by the way, the wall is being built. That's true. Biden is copying Trump by building a wall, but it's not because Grandpa had a come to MAGA moment on the border crisis. Joe says he had no choice. I'll answer one question on the border wall. The border wall, the money was appropriated for the border wall. I tried to get them to reappropriate, to redirect that money. They didn't. They wouldn't. And in the meantime, there's nothing under the law other than they have to use the money for what was appropriate. I can't stop that. Do you believe the border wall works? No. Biden is directly contradicting his own DHS secretary, who just claimed that there was an acute and immediate need for the wall and is now gutting all environmental regulations to build one. It puts the White House in a tough spot and has them spinning faster than Jesse after four tequila shots. Team Biden can't piss off the far left with a wall, nor can they give the orange ombre any credit. Do you have a disagreement with his Department of Homeland Security I, I, Secretary? What I want to tell you what the president said and what your colleague asked him. He said, no, he doesn't believe that the I border wall is effective. speaking in direct contradiction to what his own Homeland I know, I hear Security you. Secretary I says. hear you. I'm speaking for the president. This is something that we were required by law, and we are complying. This is an administration that does believe in the rule of law. DHS is required to comply by the law. We are complying by the law. DHS is complying by the law. He said there will not be another foot of wall constructed in my administration. So something changed. What? You want us to break the law. Is that what you want? Why not Congress, fight them more? Congress appropriates the funding. We asked them to not use that funding for that particular purpose. They denied it. And now we're complying with the law. Of course. Mayorkas was forced to put out a statement moments ago claiming he did not contradict Biden. It's also confusing. And he says walls are not the answer. Yet in the next paragraph, he admits they're still being forced to build one. Meanwhile, Trump is gorging on Biden's border flip-flop, saying, quote, so interesting to watch crooked Joe Biden break every environmental law in the book to prove that I was right. Will Joe Biden apologize to me and America? And while Trump waits for Biden to bend the knee, liberal cities are crying uncle. Uh, Chicago residents are fed up with migrants flooding their city. That's the simple solution is... No, turn the buses around. We come in a community of black people where we already get the low scraps. And then you want to take the little scraps, the resources that we have, and put us at the bottom of the barrel? That's not fair. You cannot keep bringing immigrants in. The city does not have the money. You cannot track them. You ain't tracking them good at the police station. You don't know their name, but you want to spread them all over the city. It is unsanitary, it's unsafe, and it's just not right. Mm, so, Harold, good to see you back at the table. You know how this happened, right? You had to make the Democrats feel the pain. They had to share the burden. So it goes back to that move with the buses. It's the lesson for all issues. You have to share the suffering. Don't you agree? I agree. It is good to be back around the table. I, I'm, I'm a believer, as I have on every issue, that being bold, and even if you push the envelope legally, it's the right thing to do. There's no doubt uh, that Greg Abbott, Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll even give DeSantis some credit as they, as they uh, were able to bust people or encourage people to be bused or help bust them across the country. It made cities across the country understand the kind of enormous pressures that these cities on the border are under. Uh, I think the, the, the White House has, has had to do what the White House had to do. We can, we can talk about it. I love it when people come around in my position, and I'm not going to bash them. I'm going to applaud them. Now, I wish they had done it sooner. We've mm -hmm. been saying this for a long time around this table. The wall, as I've said, you've got to now reform the asylum process. I do think the wall alone won't work, and I've, I've said that on the show. But we need, uh, we need an asylum process that allows people to apply but not stay in America while they do. And if they do, if they're allowed to stay in America, the threshold has to be so high. You can't just come to the border and say things are really bad at home uh, and I want to come here. Three, we have to invest in new technology and invest in ways to help cities deal with this enormous challenge. And four... You know, and finally, if, if indeed we want aid for the border, which I think we do, and we need aid in Ukraine, tie it together and pass it in a CR. Stop both sides politicizing and complaining about this. Do what's right for the border, and don't let that be an excuse not to do what's right overseas and vice versa. I applaud the White House for doing this. I don't quite understand why you made, if the reports are right, the Mayorkas had to back off the statement and saying that we're going to build a wall. But whatever the case, this is the right thing to do, and I would agree with you. Had it not been for those governors sending those migrants, Greg, you called it from the very beginning, Thank we you. might not be in the place we are today. Oh.
could have saved so much time if you said, Greg, you're right. <laughs> Jesse, uh, they had to hit rock bottom, right? And the only reason why they had to hit rock bottom is they are so allergic to any words uttered by Trump. They'd let the, they'd let the country suffer because they can't admit that they were wrong. That's how insecure they are. Mm. If you or a politician like Donald Trump, he was always open-minded. Mm -hmm. Remember, he never wanted to commit to something because in a negotiation, you want to leave your options open. That's what Biden needs to do. And he could have easily said, you know what? We're in a little trouble. This money's out there. They tell me it's a good idea to build it, so we're going to build it. And we're getting control. And then pivot away. Because then he looks like a, just a small man who can't admit a mistake. He's lying again because he said he tried to convince Congress to misappropriate the money, they, the Democrats, had the House and the Senate for two years. Mm -hmm. They had it in 2021, 2022. And so you couldn't convince Nancy and Chuck mm -hmm. to move the money somewhere else? That's a lie. And then DHS, they said this was an acute need to do, and they blew up 26 federal regulations to do it. So that doesn't sound like something that, you know, it was... And then they went to the Supreme Court for stuff. They ignored enforcing the law with Hunter. They could have charged Hunter with tax felonies. They didn't do that. He chooses what laws he wants to enforce. Best part about this thing, Ducey goes, well, once they build it, are you just going to tear it down? <laughs> because, right, that's legal to tear yeah. it down now. And he also drilled 100 holes in the wall so the antelope can migrate to Mexico. Mm. So he could light it on fire. He could do what he wants. But I tell you what, Greg, it's going to cost us like five times more than it should have because he sold extra wall that was gathering dust at a huge loss. And I want to hear what this new technology is. How many times have you heard, oh, there's all this new technology that's going to stop illegal immigration? What is it? What is this new technology that's better than a border wall? They can't name it because it doesn't exist. The new technology is making America inhospitable. That's, That's what it is. They're doing a great job. Yeah. Or a wire that you then cut. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's new technology, a wire cutter. Martha, when you, when you see that America is in chaos in so many different areas, it has to do with what we're seeing here, which was a refusal to do the right thing because it might align you with your opposition. Okay. It might align you with Trump. So whether it's crime or riots or looting or immigration or education, you just go in the opposite direction until you hit rock bottom. It's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you become president, every president, you're, as a leader, one of your biggest, most important responsibilities is national security. So if something's working, just pivot to other stuff. Leave that alone. You don't have to make a big deal out of the fact that you're going to let that stay, that policy stay in place. He had to undo absolutely every single thing. And, you know, I was actually, maybe I'm naive, I was surprised when I heard him backpedal on this because I thought I was going to hear something along the lines of what Harold just mentioned that they were pivoting, that they were making a turn in the policy and acknowledging the problem. There's nothing wrong as a leader with saying, I, I, I feel your pain. Maybe it's taken us a little too long to get here, but I'm going to make up for it, right? Yeah. We're, we're going to build this 20 miles. Obviously, that you know, it's 2,000 miles long. We're going to build this 20 miles. We think this is the most important place to put it. And we're going to make sure that the people who are yelling in Chicago, I think those might be the most powerful voices in this story right now, are the ones that we just played. Because... People in Chicago and New York and all of these cities, which you point out, you know, they sent these buses to, they're like, why do I have to go to the back of the line, mm -hmm. right? And in politics, you see sea changes. And I am very curious to see if we are on the cusp of one of those, right? Look what happened in the midterms. In New York and California, you had more conservatives elected than anyone expected in a midterm that really didn't go conservatives' way. So watch these voices, like these voices in Chicago, because I th and, and who's going to the south of the border now? Eric Adams and the mayor of, New of Chicago, because they know that their political situation is very precarious. They have to pivot. The president just sits there and says, well, I'm not doing anything different. I, I'm only, my hands are tied on this. I, I, I didn't have any choice. I have to build a wall. I mean, that makes sense to absolutely no one. He said it about Afghanistan, remember? Oh, I had to get out of there. Trump made me leave at that yeah. timeline. Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's preposterous. And I think most people watching it, just it just doesn't make any sense to them. No, you know, uh, Judge, what do you make of uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre's uh, complying with the law excuse? Well, you know, I'm so I'm so impressed that she's decided that that both she and the president will follow the law. But I think the most the, the saddest part about all this is that 
uh, and, and the obvious answer is that they cannot admit that, uh, just as Martha, the point that Martha's making, it's, it's just beyond the Republicans. It's beyond the Democrat governor of Massachusetts and the Democrat mayor in New York City. We're talking about the average American uh, in Chicago who says, why do I have to get to the back of the line? You know, you don't even know their names and you're spreading them all over our city. I mean, that is the exact point. We now have, in one year, 151 known terrorists. We have no idea how many other terrorists have come through. And this excuse that, you know, we have to build the wall, that is an outright lie. They lie to us. They gaslight us all the time. And Mallorcas can't even use the word wall. It's very clear. We have an acute need to construct a physical barrier and roads in the vicinity of the border. They can't use the word right. wall. But what I want to know is, will they now admit that they're racist and they're xenophobes? Will they now admit that they are hateful people for putting up this wall? Because they've said that it's immoral, ineffective, and expensive. Ilhan Omar said it was a monument uh, wall to racism. And, you know, NBC said Trump's border wall is never about security. It's a reminder of white supremacy. And it's a monument to white supremacy by Bloomberg. Trump's wall of shame is a white racist hostility surging through the country. I mean, all the takedown that they did, and now they're in a position, not because it's the right thing to do, not because it's a smart thing to do or because the law requires it, but because they know they are losing. These are political uh, uh, operatives who only care about their value in the political world. They could care less about any of us. You know, I wonder if they use the word wall in their personal daily life. Like, honey, I think we should hang the family portrait on the physical barrier in the living room. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.